Hello and welcome. I'm Dorothy. We are going to talk about the astrology for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So what dates are those? It's August 19th, 20, and 21. We are just about to tie up the Leo season. Let me tell you, here in New England, you can feel it. As soon as we get halfway through Leo, which is 15 degrees of Leo, cool at night, the leaves are starting to change. You can just see it. We're going to have 90 degrees tomorrow and the next day. However, you can just feel that coolness in the air, getting ready for Virgo. Virgo is the mutable sign of, of summer in the Northern Hemisphere. It's summer. And so we're getting ready to shift into what's next, into another season, into a whole different focus. But before then, I got some things to talk about. So let's get started. We're going to share my screen with you. You know, you know what, before I share my screen and those of you who are new, oh, I did share my screen anyways. <laughs> Let me stop the share. We'll do Astro Dice at the end, all right? And then we will also do a card from this deck. It's just a nice way to tie up what does spirit want us to know? Right now, I'm going to tell you what I see. <laughs> and after that, I will tell you what, you know, we'll interpret what spirit wants us to know. All right. I did talk about this in the prior video. So I would like you to actually really go listen to that, but I will elaborate on it just a little bit more here. So what we have on Friday morning, so this is third, all the way, we're feeling this on Thursday, the 18th, we're feeling it on Friday, the 19th, and this is that last quarter between the sun and the moon. And that's just when they're at a 90 degree angle to each other. And this is at 26 degrees of Taurus. Let me, um, let me show you one other thing too. Here's that last quarter. I want you to look back. This is November 19th, 2021. We had an eclipse. We had a lunar eclipse. And here it is at 27 degrees of Taurus. Here's today on August 19th or August 18th, depending on where you live, is, excuse me, the last quarter moon. All right. So these, this is part of a lunar gestation family that started back in May of 2021. What I want you to focus on, I want you to look at, go back to November 19th and look at that lunar eclipse and what were you processing and working on back then, right? What was that all about? It was in Taurus. It was at the very end of Taurus. And so the energy of, just let me double check in my ephemeris here. So the energy of that represents um, what do I love? What do I value? What's important to me? Okay. And again, we have that going on today. So I'll just go right back to today, August 19th, August 18th, depending on where you live. We have the moon that is making that last quarter aspect with the sun. So we are finalizing things. We are tying up loose ends. That full moon showed us everything we needed to know about what we were focusing on in regard to Taurus, what we love, what we value, the earthy things, the valuable things, the food, the resources, looking at all of that. Those are really big and important things that are going on in the world these days. Taurus is our food, our resources, how we feel safe, how we feel grounded, our finances, our money. And that's those are just some of them. Everybody has their own idea of what they value, okay? Taurus is what I value. And those are some of those things that I just mentioned. Okay. So focus today and the 18th and the 19th, right? And look at and spend some time. You can do this over a couple of days. You know, what, what am I, what's important for me? What's going on nine months ago? I never knew I'd be in a whole different home, a whole different place. It was just like, yeah, life has definitely made some big changes for me in nine months. And what about you? Right. So look at that, figure out what it is for you, finishing what we have started from way back in May, new moon in May of uh, 2021. But this full moon is the most recent connection to this event, this lunar event. So look at those times. What do you see that is similar today now that you were very aware of back in November of 2021? Okay, that's what... That's what Friday's all about. Moon and Taurus will 
a trine Pluto early in the morning. I'm looking at it. Moon and Taurus will make a conjunction to Mars at 7 a.m. on the 19th and then go void, of course. And then the moon will enter the sign of Gemini at 8.06 a.m. This is all Eastern Daylight Time, by the way. So please adjust to your own, uh, you know, your own place. And that's the energy that we have right there. On the 19th, I talked about this yesterday as well. On the 19th, the moon, I mean, the sun is in the exact quincunx aspect to Pluto, separating quincunx aspect to Neptune. It's facing down because it's just the time of day. And so again, making lots of adjustments. We're really aligning here there's a lot of solar flares happening right now as well i don't follow that a whole lot because that's not astrology but the energy of that and whatever it is that comes to the planet you guys know you energy workers know what this is and i don't <laughs> it's it really it really amps us up sometimes especially if we're overly sensitive Next aspect I want to talk about, and this is the, Mar the Mars aspect. Mars is now entered the sign of Gemini. So ingress into the Gemini. This is what it looks like for my latitude and longitude. It'll be in a different location, a different house for you if you're in a different time zone than I am on the East Coast of the United States. So it will be in a different house. However, that's not an important point in the way I'm talking about it right now. It is important in other aspects. What does it mean now? Mars ingress into the sign of Gemini, August 20th. It's going to stay in. These are notes I write at the beginning of every year. Mars is going to stay in the sign of Gemini from August 20th all the way until March 25th. So that's just about seven months, a little over seven months. And that's typical when Mars does its retrograde. The last time Mars was retrograde in the sign, oh, I looked it up yesterday. <laughs> It was 1990, I believe. I'm going to try and do a forecast just on Mars in Gemini. Um, let's take a look. I have it right here. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. The last time it was, it was retrograde in the sign of Gemini was in the summer. Um, it started in the summer of 1990. And so in Gemini from... August of 1990 to December of 1990. So that's a really long time. So that was the last time Mars was in Gemini and retrograde. And retrograde, that's the key. Mars is in Gemini every two years, but not retrograde in Gemini every two years. So now that Mars is here, what are we going to get? We're going to get, I'm just going to touch on this because I'm going to do a really, a, if I feel up for it this weekend, I'm going to do a separate video on it. Um, I've been trying to do that. <laughs> I think I'm getting uh I think I'm getting ready for it. So so Mars in Gemini, the energy of that, of course, is innovative and creative new ideas. So with the action around new ideas, we're really looking for that. Initiating new ideas, sharing information. If you're a Gemini, you are definitely going to be feeling this. And if you have nothing in Gemini, it's going to stir that up in you. It's going to stir that up. So some of us will be overloaded. Others will be like, yee I've got some super fuel here to get going. And so more on that as we move through it. But in the meantime, this is the moment of Mars in Gemini. And the other aspect I want to talk about for the weekend is Mercury. He's the ruler of Gemini. But Mercury right now is in Virgo in its own sign as well. It's exalted in that sign too. So Mercury is also involved and it is in an opposition with Neptune. So this is on Sunday. Again, this is in the wee hours of the morning. So we're feeling most of these things um, for a couple days. The ingress of Mars into Gemini, we won't feel it until it actually steps into that, you know, that area. All right, this is the tropical zodiac. So Mercury opposite Neptune has everything to do with, you know, we're going to focus on the details and then we are going to feel a little unsure and unclear. Focus on the details, unclear. I kind of think of it like this, you know, how you put the foot on the gas and then you take your foot off the gas and you just sort of coast for a little bit. Foot on the gas, get, get a little more momentum and then coast little more momentum and then cost. That's what this feels like to be. So we need to find the, the the balance between the details of what we're talk of what we're looking at and allowing things to flow. 
And that's what that is. And again, the moon is still in Gemini because this is it's going to be in Gemini throughout the weekend. It enters Cancer uh, late in the evening on Sunday, the 21st. So for most of the weekend from 8 a.m. on Friday, Eastern Daylight Time, 8.06 a.m., all the way until we get to 8.30 p.m. on Sunday, Eastern Daylight Time, the moon's in Gemini. So again, lots of movement, lots of talking, lots of insight, lots of communicating, going here, going there. And this time of, of, of year, actually it's been going on for quite some time, when the moon is in Gemini and then Cancer and part of Leo, it moves into its out of bounds range, which gives it even more, um, more of what it is, more emotion around communication, more I need to tell you how I feel. It just amplifies the, the resonance of the moon in Cancer, I mean, in Gemini, Cancer and Leo. It adds, it adds to it. Okay, we're going to stop right there for that piece. I know that's a lot. <laughs> I'm a mess. I've been working for hours today. I'm going to catch up. Oh, I think I'm always trying to catch up. I need to stop saying that. How about I say I have caught up and everything is happening in divine timing. And then I have clients. <laughs> you guys have made appointments. So that's not divine timing. That's like get your you know what together and get on a call with your clients <laughs> all right i rolled quite an interesting thing and it is the south node i don't typically roll that you know it just is what it is that means it's the south node in gemini oh, here we are and it's in the 12th house oops that there it is so what does that mean when i roll these dice for those of you who are new it's just i i, I ask spirit just to give me an extra message so we have the south node in Gemini, I'm going to write this down, south node in Gemini, it gives me a minute to uh, process it too, in the 12th house, the south node is what we know, where we've been, the 12th house is um, is our past, it's our karma, it is uh, the unconscious thoughts and processes in Gemini. And since the moon's in Gemini this whole weekend, what this tells me is, is that additionally to everything we've already talked about, the astrodites are saying that more uh, unconscious can come to the surface, more, I would th I'm thinking secrets, more things that are hidden from you, hidden from me, hidden from us will come to the surface over the weekend. There's just so, we knew this would happen. You know, as time goes on, the truth shows up in different ways. And it doesn't matter what you're looking at, whether you're looking at politics or whether you're looking at medicine or countries or a person or I don't care. The truth slowly shows its face because the light will always come to the surface. Sometimes the muck comes to the surface first and that feels pretty crappy. However, what do you think the, uh, let's see what the cards want us to do. I like this deck because um, I just need to be grounded a little bit more sometimes. And so if I'm feeling a little out of myself, so out of my body, if you will, I go and I'll, I'll pull a card or I will roll the dice, you know, because I'm always looking at charts. So it's just nice <laughs> when I'm out of myself, <laughs> we get the shapeshifter. It's like, okay, I guess we're going to do more of that. <laughs> oh, no. The moon's here, too. It's very mutable energy. The shapeshifter card, <coughs> excuse me, is very mutable energy. And we just talked about um, the mutableness of Mercury in Virgo opposite Neptune in Pisces. And so this reminds us that we can be anything we want and we can manifest our dreams. And it kind of even goes along with the roll of the dice in the 12th house because the 12th house is dreams. Our goals, our dreams, especially the hidden goals and dreams that we need to bring to the surface. So it reminds us, the shapeshifter card actually reminds us to, um, if if you're not manifesting those dreams that you, that you have, those dreams and desires, then maybe it's time to change your perspective. And, change, and, and that's really important. So if you can read your own chart and you know where those things are, then you're able to do that. But if you can't, 
then you come see me. That's my job. I love doing what I do. So you're welcome to uh, come to my website, DorothyMorganAstrologer.com. Please join the newsletter. I send that out a couple times a month with lots of great written content, specials, classes, announcements, and et cetera. I don't have a funnel. I just, you give me your email and I will send you something twice a month. And that's pretty much it. Once you confirm you want it. So please come and check that out. DorothyMorganAstrologer.com. Thank you everybody so much. And I will see you next time.